So in a previous video, I told you guys I bought a set of Cherokee axles so that I could make my, uh, the new tracks I bought work for this winter season. And uh, I told you they were attached to something else. It wasn't a Cherokee. So we're here in Missouri now to pick up our axles and see if we can drive our axles home. So we're gonna go find ourselves an Uber or a Lyft and see what we're getting into. So like I said, this all started because I was looking for a Dana 30 on Facebook Marketplace. And there's the Dana 30 I bought. Now, the problem is, no, I don't think it's really a problem actually. That Dana 30 is attached to a 1949 Willys wagon. Uh, 49, I believe, is the first year they offered four wheel drive in the Willys wagons, which doesn't really matter because this has obviously got Dana 30 in the front, 35 in the rear. Um, the other thing this one has, we'll just go ahead and open up and show you right off the bat. It's got a cool little horse on the hood, so that's nice. It's Sorry, had to use two hands to get the hood prop up here. But that, as you can see, is not the stock motor. That there is a Vortec V6, much like in my old 1930 Dodge car. It's got a 4L60E transmission behind that, MP231 transfer case, Dana 35, Dana 30. So very, very similar drivetrain to the old Dodge car. The old Dodge car just has a 700R4 with an MP233 behind it, which is an MP231 with electronic shift. The other difference, as you can tell by that computer right there, this motor is a 1997 motor. The old Dodge car is a 94. So this one is OBD2, which makes tuning and diagnostics and all that much easier than in the other one. And uh, electric fans. This is vintage air, air conditioning. So this thing has heat and air conditioning. Much bigger mirrors than the car does, as you can see. Well, on the front here, it's got high lift jack with a wooden handle, which I have not seen. Super winch, probably gonna trade that out for Harbor Freight winch. Uh, fog lights that work, all the headlights, blinkers, turn signals work. Got your snatch block ready to go, I guess. That's kind of probably not something I would use. But uh, these are 295 70 17 tires, which comes out to like a 34. Uh, Lee Springs front and rear, of course. This is all a wood panel, kind of faked patina on this thing. Honda Odyssey seats, which are amazingly comfortable. I've driven it probably like 20 miles now. And then it came with a spare hood that's got this super cool wrap on it. So uh, when we get home, we gotta put that hood on there. But you see up here, we've got some old school looking new gauges. Got the spotlight up here, so we can spotlight stuff. Stereo charger, this is your heater and air conditioner. CB, nice little cubby hole up here. All sound mat insulation all the way through. That hood is really cool. So this is the wagon, it's got a Gas can on the back, spare tire, dual swing out with a fold down table. Of course, you got your hatches in the back, LED light conversion. So this thing should be like ready to go and drive, which hopefully it is because I now have to drive it 2,000 miles to get back home, which is why we're at Harbor Freight to buy some tools. But back to the whole reason for buying this thing, these are a unit bearing hubless axle. So those polar tracks will bolt right onto here. It's even the correct bolt pattern, ready to go. And that thing is going to look so freaking cool on tracks. Just throw it all in the cart. All the stuff. Definitely the camo ones. Okay, this should help get us home if something goes wrong. I just got to figure out how to fit it all in here. Okay, it's getting late and I want to get to the hotel, so we're just throwing it all in here for now. One thing that's cool, if you could see, uh, check out the step for getting in the back. I like that. And that just hooks in there. Alright, the sun has gone down, so what better time to start a 2,000 mile road trip in a 75 year old vehicle that you've never seen before. So, we're going to head west, off into the darkness, make it hopefully a little ways out of here uh, towards the western side of Missouri, get a hotel somewhere, and get up in the morning, check this thing over real good, do all the fluids, all that stuff, and then westbound. Welcome to Kansas, everything's going good, so we're just going to keep on rolling. So it is the next morning, and we are just to the west, southwest I think. Where are you? There you are, <laughs> that looks freaking great. Uh, we're going to add some more to that. We're just to the west of uh, Kansas City, Kansas. Uh, I got a hotel here. We didn't go too much farther last night because I was really tired from a day of traveling. So 
Yeah. I'm gonna get some oil to put in there. So, so we're just uh, checking. I checked engine oil and coolant and all that, obviously, before I started it up this morning and pulled it over here in the back of the parking lot. And now, check out front diff, rear diff, transfer case. Make sure they're all good because we got a lot of driving to do. It really sucked to blow up a rear end or something on the way. So, the guy who owned this thing, he uh, he only drove it around locally. Um, so, that rear diff's a little low, or was low on fluid, but that's not a huge concern for me right now that it ran like that because what kills gears and bearings and things is heat. And you're just cruising around town locally there's not much heat but 2,000 miles home there's heat also I'm not too concerned about that Dana 35 back there having some uh, some festive looking oil because it's a Dana 35 and that's the most likely thing to need to get upgraded in any axle ever anyway so if it needs upgraded it gets upgraded I don't think I have a socket for this, so we're going to use the crescent wrench. Let's see if we can break off our cable while we're at it. This is not going to go well. I can tell already. I should get the socket for this. No way! <laughs> for sure I was going to strip off there, I was going to hit this. I was going to break the shifter cable off. Then I wouldn't be able to shift it without crawling under, putting it in gear, starting it up in gear, going. Put it back up, shut it off, put it in reverse, start it up. I may be over exaggerating that just a little bit, but that's how I felt that was going to go. It's wet, that's a good sign. Oh, and there's oil right there. Oh yeah, this thing is topped off cherry. Perfect. That fluid looks really good too, that makes me happy. We'll go get a rag, clean all this up. All right, so I may not know much about this Willys or much of what I'm doing in general at all, really, but luckily I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, so I'm basically an expert. down the highway everything was going good but I was getting a little hungry for breakfast I was like man where should I stop I need a sign well I guess that sign works check out this cool little town St. Mary's, Kansas. Uh, what I did at pretty much any GPS, no matter what you're doing, you can tell it to avoid highways and it'll send you state routes, back roads, county roads, and you get to see so much more than just running up and down the interstate highways. And since I'm not, not on any serious time schedule, and this is not gonna be a fast trip anyway, that's what I'm doing for the first part of it at least. And, and then you get to check out little places like this that you would, you'd never see otherwise. I, I very much recommend doing that when you're on a trip somewhere and, and have the time. So, yeah, look at this place. Old trucks, streets lined with flags up and down all through downtown. Like the true heart of America, small towns. Hold up, we gotta turn around. Check out these old tractors. That's not what we're going to look at. Look what I saw up here. I had seen videos of this and pictures and stuff, but the world's largest ball of twine. We gotta go see that. Push button doors. What are lights? That's pretty freaking cool. That's huge. So it's 46 feet all the way around it. Frank Stober's Twine Tail. 
He was born in 1891. Uh, da. 1953, Frank stumbles over some loose twine and decides to gather it up to burn. Instead, he begins winding a ball and does not stop till it's as big as the barn door. Which would be that. In 1956, it was up to 7 foot 5 inches in diameter, 4,000 pounds. In 1973, it got the Guinness Book of World Records. Pretty cool to give some size comparison to this thing. I'm 6'4 to here, not, not to here, but it's big. Pretty cool. And then we got the old wagon, the old gas station, the trading post. We are in, what's the town? Cocker City. There's currently 8,507,430 feet of twine in that ball and it weighs 27,017 pounds. All right, let's get going again. Oh, hey, I just realized their water tower is a ball of twine. So that's cool. Let's go. All right, only another 1,473 miles to go. See, that is something I never would have seen if I'd have stuck to the highways. That's why we go the back roads when we can. Okay, so we're heading north right now to Nebraska, and I don't know how well this is gonna translate on camera, but over there where we come from to the west does not look that bad, or sorry, to the east, but to the west over here where we're going, it's looking rough out there. So I don't know if the camera's going to show the difference in the skies on your side, but it definitely looks like a much darker, getting worse, nastier storm that way once we get up here to the north ways. That's the way we're going. As you saw, uh, visibility is getting bad because you know it's dark and raining, and got little tiny windshield wipers on that old thing. So uh, lots of standing water on the road. Trucks still want to do 75. So uh, we pulled over here in uh, North Platte, Nebraska. Got a hotel room for the night. Going to walk over to the Mexican restaurant right here, get some dinner. And in the morning, I think we're going to go check out the rail yard because North Platte is the home of the world's largest rail yard. Is it fitting that as I sit here and eat my dinner, by the way, Mexican food didn't work out. But as I turn on the TV, these guys are on it as I'm making this trip across half the country. I think that's pretty fitting. So here it is. This is the Bailey Yard, which I looked it up and it is the world's largest rail yard, rail switching yard, whatever, as you can see by this uh, above view right here. Supposedly it's like 10,000 rail cars a day come through here. Down there, there's a big tower that you can go up in and look out over the whole thing, get a good view, watch the trains all switching around. But it doesn't open for like another hour and a half. So instead of waiting here for an hour and a half in the middle of nowhere, we're gonna drive west. And also as much as I wanted to stay off of I-80 on this trip, because this year I have gone back and forth across I-80, I don't even, I don't even know how many times. It's been a lot but I'm glad I came up through Kansas and got up here because uh, the way I was going across I-70, I guess Colorado, especially in the Denver area, got just like hammered with some massive snowstorm and I-70 got shut down yesterday and it's still all messed up. So uh, I think we're still gonna hit some snow across Wyoming up here, but it shouldn't be as bad as what happened to Colorado. Hopefully it's not like close the highway bad, so we'll see. Well, as you can see, temperature dropped, and unfortunately, just up ahead of us, I-80 is closed. It says it'll be closed for seven to nine hours, is the estimate. Trucks are all backed up everywhere. Exits are closed. They got gates across the highway, and it's a mess. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do just yet. Well, that is the end of the line. See all the lights up right there. They got the highway closed off. It's actually pretty good here, but I guess just up ahead it is most definitely not. So, 
Guess we're staying in Cheyenne for a bit. Okay, change of plans. They just opened the westbound lanes to a group of trucks and let a group through, and I got just lucky enough. I was coming back from lunch. Uh, I went and got some pizza. Headed back to the motel room I got, and I uh, saw that group starting to go through, and I was able to get in on it. So now we are headed up over the summit. There's a, uh, well, as you can see, a bunch of trucks, and me and my old wagon. <laughs> We're gonna try to make it up over the summit. All that over there is still closed, coming back this way. Uh, traffic cameras still show some pretty good snow and ice on top, so we'll see. How it goes well i see why the eastbound is still closed that's a big wreck that's the front half of the trailer up here and the back half of that trailer back there it's split in half or is that two different trailers that are both split apart oh man there's more back here oh no this is a whole other trailer up here that trailer is folded in half Wow, that's a whole load of pampers, diapers. And then there's another one behind it ripped apart up here. Oh, he's rolled over the bank, scattered everywhere. That's a load of las frozen lasagna. Dang. That's a bad one. Okay, it's safe to say the weather has escalated. We're driving completely on ice now. Um, that wiper's kicking ass. This one's doing okay. I might swap them uh, if we get stopped and we still have some weather to go. So, uh, so far, everyone's just taking it nice and easy, which is good. It's all just ice, and the wind is blowing straight that way pretty hard. So, we're gonna keep cruising and try to make it up over the, the top here and get down out of this. One good thing is this thing has a CB here, and it works. And I wouldn't go with anybody else, no, but we can't go a complete stop on that hill. This road is a solid sheet of ice. Yeah, dude, everybody notices it's a sheet of ice. It's a sheet of ice. But uh, some guys on the eastbound side were saying that uh, they shut it down in Laramie, and then the everything on the highway filled up with trucks, all the parking filled up the truck stops. Um, Laramie's full, no parking anywhere, so they moved the road closure all the way back to Rollins. And now Rollins is filled up, and uh, there's no parking, no nothing there either. So that's the guys coming eastbound. It's completely closed eastbound because of that accident. So uh, I guess once we get out of this on this side into Laramie, <laughs> no point in stopping there. We just keep going, uh, probably even past Rollins and uh, towards Green River before it won't be just completely plugged up with trucks and traffic who are stuck from going eastbound. I uh, should have just had this guy haul it. That would have been way easier. So update, we've got an issue. As you can see, that wiper's still kicking ass. This one is not because it's laying up there on the hood. It fell off. So problem is I'm in this lane now and that everything's, I don't know, nowhere to pull over here. So um, yeah. I might be doing the Ace Ventura out the side to get to an exit or something I can pull off on and try to, well at this point we're halfway to the job of putting that wiper over here so I might just do that. This is not good. Oh man, should have stayed at the hotel. The problem solving now. I can reach this part and see until I get to like a safe spot to stop. I put my glove on first though. My hand's cold. And we finally found a good place to stop. Let's yeah, see. How does this stay on there? set screw but I don't know how to tighten it.
think we're good. Okay, we're back on the road, and I see how that uh, the inner spline piece is supposed to come out of there and stay on the whatever comes out of the, the, the dash, the cowl of this thing, and then locks on with a set screw, and then that uh, stainless or whatever piece of the wiper locks and clips on over it. But the whole spline piece came out of there, and I can't figure out how to get it out of the wiper stamp stainless piece. So I'll have to try to dig that out later. It's on there enough for now. Hopefully it falls off again. It doesn't leave. Uh, but as you can see, the weather's breaking. So hopefully we don't need too much more of that ideal. Hey Laramie, Wyoming. You can see everybody's shut down on the other side. Apparently they're shut down all the way back to Rollins. So that's a big backup. So it is the next morning and we're getting back on the road. Uh, we made it to Rollins last night uh, when that group I was in. Wow, look at all the trucks over there. See all of those lights? That's all trucks just lined up parked on the freeway because all the truck stops are full. All of the Walmart parking lots are full, everything's filled up. Uh, this town is completely plugged full of trucks. Uh, as myself and the group I was in that are coming over the pass yesterday that you saw, uh, like two minutes ago, uh, they closed the highway back down behind us and just shut it all down. And then now everything is closed from Brock Springs eastbound all the way to Cheyenne, which is a massive section of highway. Uh, it's closed westbound and part of it too, but they are letting some westbound traffic go out of Rollins where I'm at. Look at this. The truck's just parked. Parked for the night on the highway. There's nowhere else to go. Uh, so this town is full, so they're letting some of the westbound traffic go to try to clear this town out some. It's not that bad, they said, going west to Rock Springs, so I'm taking advantage of that and getting out of here. we got like 110 miles to go to Rock Springs, and then we should be past all of the closures, so off we go. home we made it with all the detours and the closed highways and the back roads it ended up being 2164 miles in a 75 year old willie's wagon that i had never seen before and i had zero issues other than this wiper arm falling off in a blizzard which was no big deal we got that fixed so you're probably wondering what the plans are now what am i going to do to it what am i going to upgrade and change and build up on this and the answer is nothing this thing just went over 2,000 miles across the back roads of middle america through a wyoming blizzard and closed highways hours upon hours of 70 mile an hour highway driving across utah and idaho then over the eastern oregon mountains and across the desert through rainstorms with no issues why why would i change anything it drove great it handled great highway speeds no problem comfortable as can be to sit in no issues at all. I'm not changing a thing. And I, I know I said I was buying this so that I could just throw the tracks on it because they'll bolt right onto this with no issue. Other than, you know, we put hydro steer on just to upgrade the steering. Bigger tie rod and hydro steer. That way it can turn the tracks. It's kind of a necessity. Other than that, nothing. But the problem is it drove so freaking good and it drives so nice up and down the road that it's like, do I want to put the tracks on it? Because if I do, then I can't drive it up and down the road anymore. So I don't know. Um, I'm now conflicted on that. I have the tracks are sitting there. They obviously won't go on that thing. This, oh, I don't know. So what do you, what do you think I should do? Should I 
throw the hydro steer on here, which I think I'm going to do either way, just so it's there in case I want to bolt the tracks on. Do I run the tracks on this this winter, or do I just keep this and old Jed as the tracked rig, and keep the tires on this, throw some tire chains in the back, and use this for winter recovery as it is on tires? You know, I still got the track rig over there too, but what do you think? Let me know. I'm going to go inside, take a break for a minute. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. That was a really fun road trip, and we'll see you next time.